فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدِ اهْتَدَوْا وَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّمَا هُمْ فِي شِقَاقٍ فإذا جدتهم فضوهم إلى أن يشهد يشهد أن لا إله الله وأن محمد رسول الله فإنهم أتاه لك بذلك فأخبرهم أن الله قد فرض عليهم خمس صلوات في كل يوم وليلة فإنهم أتاه لك بذلك فأخبرهم أن الله قد فرض عليهم صدقة أو صدقة تؤخذ من أغنيائهم فترد على فقرائهم فإنهم أطاه لك بذلك فإياك وكرائم أموالهم فاتكي دعوة المظلوم فإنه ليس بينه وبين الله حجاب الحديث Regarding this particular hadith that is mentioned in by Imam Bukhari rahimullah, the general meaning of hadith was said that regarding al-ilm and its virtue is the hadith of Mu'adi bin Jabal, the hadith of uh, Ibn Abbas regarding the Prophet Islam sending Mu'adi bin Jabal to Yemen. So he mentioned concern that uh, uh, Ibn Abbas narrating as to what occurred regarding this particular uh, matter with the Prophet Islam commissioned Mu'ad to go to Yemen to give da'wah. So uh, from this it shows regarding the Prophet Islam being the person then was alive, uh, alayhi sallallahu salam, but then he appointed someone, commissioned someone to take the responsibility of going to Yemen to give da'wah. So it shows concern that you know, sometimes that ilm sometimes can be taken from a person who is a less degree when those who are more, uh, more qualified are present. So ilm can still be taken by those who are less qualified with the presence of those who are more qualified. Now, as in the case of the Prophet Islam being alive and he then commissioned Mu'ad bin Jabal regarding this particular task. So it shows regarding that ilm is not a necessary condition that we have to get, uh, uh, receive knowledge from the most qualified available. That's not the case in the time of Prophet Islam and, will not end, uh, and that will not continue. And so that's concerned from this particular hadith. Also it shows concern that the Prophet Islam selected Mu'ad ibn Jabal to give, go to Yemen with the presence of Um, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali. So, but still he chose Um, Mu'ad ibn Jabal. Uh, so it shows concern that uh, the Prophet the one who selected Mu'ad regarding a particular task and that's a form of one ataskia regarding Mu'ad, uh, Mu'ad regarding his knowledge uh, by way of the Prophet Islam uh, regarding this particular task of giving da'wah. And uh, the reason for this as some of the ulama mentioned regarding Mu'ad ibn Jabal was known concerning from the Ummah or uh, from amongst those who were said to be concerning Adamukum bi halal wal haram regarding, regard, uh, regarding his knowledge of halal wal haram and Haram was the most knowledgeable or amongst the most knowledgeable regarding that particular area. Also, it shows regarding that because the person had those qualities of the reason behind, behind why he was selected. The person, Mu'ad ibn Jabra ta'ala anhu, that he was uh, given this particular task based upon he had qualifications. The Prophet Islam recognized, so he commissioned him to do this particular task of going to Yemen to give da'wah. Also, it shows regarding that in the Qatati, Qoman, Ali Kitab, then you can have somewhat informed regarding certain matters, regarding the people that you are going to. Then I mentioned, that also if you go to those people, then call them to the Shahada, or Yashad, Yashadu, and Laylallah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. So it shows regarding of this point, regarding that the Prophet uh, now giving some advice to Mu'ad regarding how to go about giving da'wah, the method of how to go about giving da'wah, and what are the things that you should emphasize. And the things to start with what? What the thing that he told him to start with? A tawheed. So he said tawheed of the shahada of la ilaha Muhammad Rasulullah which is a rukun al-awwal min al-islam. So it shows regarding this point, it shows regarding then 
that the first thing that you call them to, of the first of those things that you call them to, as some narration mentioned regarding Lailallah, it shows the importance of Tawheed slash Akhidah. It shows regarding ad dawa that dawa regarding one as Muslim, that it is something that Muad being the guy, <laughs> being told to invite those people to first thing of Lailallah, then how about us as Muslim? Not knowing of Lailallah, not knowing the Akhidah, and we falling short. So concerning known of the Akhidah, it shows one in this particular point, it shows the importance of understanding this Akhidah, of uh, uh, this Akhidah, of uh, uh, this Akhidah, of uh, uh, coming, uh, the Akhidah of Islam. So it shows the importance of the Muslim, that we ourselves need to be somewhat equipped and familiar and know and believe in the Akhidah of Ayah Sunnah wal Jamaah. Because that's, of the, the, that's the essence of the Dawah. That's the essence and where it starts. And now we can discuss where it kind of somewhat ends. So we ourselves, if that's the thing that you're supposed to invite others to, what are we upon? Are we familiar with the Aqeedah of Ayah Sunnah wal Jamaah? So it shows one, concerning the Shahada slash Aqeedah, it is something that the Muslim should give his due attention. And the Dawah, it starts with this. Nam, and learning this is something that we should give is due importance regarding understanding the, uh, the correct Aqeedah. Uh, so that's concerning, so it shows regarding the importance of Dawah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Dawah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is regarding educating the people about Islam. Educating the people about Islam. Many things has to be mentioned regarding the Hadith, but we we'll stop at that point mainly concerning that. Uh, Mu'ad having those qualities, Mu'ad regarding being equipped to invite a person to know the halal and the haram, showing that the person who invite others should know something about Islam. The one who invite others to Islam himself should be uh, familiar with Islam and have a level of understanding of Islam so as he can invite people correctly and guide them correctly. And also the person who is inviting others, that the person of the things to start with the da'wah is regarding inviting the people to lie Allah also regarding us as the Muslim before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we try to familiar and that we are aware uh, we have knowledge of the Aqeedah of Ayah Sunnah wal Jama'ah as that's the essence of the Dawah so with that inshallah ta'ala regarding that matters also regarding Al-Ilm regarding his virtue that regarding uh, the Prophet Islam selecting people of knowledge to carry out the Dawah not just anyone get up and do their own thing uh, and that uh, also regarding this matter that uh, Mu'adh ibn, Jab uh, ibn Jabal, he was given this task in the uh, Sunnah al-Asha, in the uh, the tent of the Hijra, to go to Yemen. So it wasn't going there to start up your own Jama'ah, wasn't going there to start up your own Marquez, or they go to start your own this, your own that. It's not about that. So every one of us have a responsibility regarding a da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it doesn't mean that I have to go and start my own group. To give da'wah doesn't mean I shake uh, hate him, uh, Sarhan Imi came. And that's why I don't think was translated up. Giving da'wah doesn't mean you have to have a, a building. I don't have a building to give da'wah. Sir? Amla? Nam? I don't have an organization backing me and supporting me to give da'wah. So if we make those things conditional to give da'wah, then it usually creates more of a problem in the long run. So da'wah is based upon those people who want to awn ala bil wa taqwa. Give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without all these conditions, you have to have a marakaz. You have to have a, a madrasa, you have to have a masjid, you have to have this, you have to have that, you have to have a car, you have to have that, that. Give da'wah. Based upon what you know. But when we start to put into, we have to be a part of a group, then all you become, a group. And you can somewhat see yourself different from everyone else. And that becomes the problem of the da'wah. So Muad was going, give da'wah without you being a, a group or starting a group, but just give da'wah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based upon these principles. So that regarding this matter regarding al-ilm and of the virtue concerning matters regarding lail Allah, which is al-aqeedah. Okay, we end that mix. Or is on? I hope you are. Taib. Bismillah. So go back now to the sulb al-kitab. So our, our uh, is regarding a lesson regarding uh, the book, Lumat al ittiqad uh, so the book Lumat al Ittaqad by Ibn Qudam Rahimullah. So last week we did the introduction. So as we had decided last week that we'll try more to stick with the Shar 
or Talikat of Ibn Uthaymin Rahimahullah. Uh, seeing that also it is translated. Seeing also it is translated. Inshallah ta'ala, next week we get your names. And uh, online, either if you can't get the book, then we'll try to print the math in itself. But if you print it, everyone has to contribute something. And the uh, Sadaqa box. The Arabic and I'll print the English, those on Arabic, then we can work it out later also. Right? But we try to print out each well, some something to work with. Now, which will be the Arabic or the English translated uh, copy. Uh, but until then, we start with Ibn Uthaymin Rahimullah, started with. So the Shaykh uh, Rahimullah, Ibn Uthaymin Rahimullah, regarding his taliqat of Lumt uh, al-Ittaqad, and it is based upon the Usul uh, the book, that uh, Abdul Mutun of Ayl Sunnah. Uh, before we can somewhat continue regarding this particular uh, matin Lomut al-Ittaqad as we may discuss as we continue the book that uh, some of the ulama that uh, they have criticized is this matin everything in it solid, correct, uncriticized some of the ulama have criticized three or a few points on the book so a few of the points mentioned by the author Rahimahullah have been criticized by some of the ulama uh, at that point we'll reach those points we go in more some detail regarding those points, but there's a few points regarding that of general, regarding that uh, may be used of certain ibara, certain wordings, that uh, it could have uh, mujmal, that are somewhat maybe could be taken this way or that way. Nam, so you have certain wordings that are used by the Atta Rahimullah, that uh, some of the ulama somewhat have criticized due to that, the meaning it could be taken this way or that way, in a, in a correct way or incorrect way. So that uh, so uh, <coughs> those things will be uh, covered at that point or reach a particular point in the book, inshallah Barak Ta'ala. But generally, uh, most and of what I've been mentioned is in line with the manager Ayyad Sunnah wal Jama'ah. But even the same Rahimullah, and in the, in, with his particular explanation, decided to based on mention of the book, it covers another point regarding Al Asma wa Sifat. Nam, uh, our point regarding Asma wa Sifat. So he wished to start with this particular uh, uh, discussion with laying down certain foundation. So before going into actually the book and discussing the points, based upon the Sahib uh, al-Kitab, uh, Ibn Sayyid Rahimullah, he opened the book, uh, introduced the book by outlining certain qawaid of Ayl sunnah regarding matter to uh, regarding asma wa sifat. Now, so we we'll go through that as we decide to go through to use this particular uh, text. So we'll go through the book as laid down by the author Rahimahullah, Ibn Sayyidin or the Sharah, Ibn Sayyidin Rahimahullah. So he started by stating our Prophet of Allah and the likes that he mentioned, as mentioned, Qabla al-Dukhul, Fi Sameen al-Kitab, Uhibbu an uqaddim qawahid al-Aama, al-Aama, Fi ma yata'allaq bi asma, asmahi lai subhanahu ta'ala wa sifatihi, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayn. 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 Read. Or, what we could do, sometimes, we're most of the text. You read a text in Arabic and in English. So, I might read one person, might read maybe a, a line or half a line. So, become familiar. For those who are able, for those who are able to read Arabic, may us read a few other, a few lines to start with. Nam, uh, and then we just build from there, inshallah. Mashi, for those who are able. <coughs> hey. Hey. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ba'ad. Qala al-mu'allif wa rahimahullah ta'ala al-qa'idatu al-ula. Hey, qala al-sharih, then al-mu'allif. Hey, al-sharih, Muhammad ibn Salaam al-Tawmi wa rahimahullah ta'ala al-qa'idatu al-ula في الواجب نحو النصوص الكتاب والسنة في أسماء الله وصفاته الواجب في نصوص الكتاب والسنة إبقاء, إبقاء دلالتها على ظاهرها من غير تغيير لأن الله أنزل القرآن بلسان عربي مبين والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يتكلم بلسان عربي فوجب إبقاء دلالة كلام الله وكلام رسوله على ما هي عليه في ذلك اللسان ولأن تغييرها عن ظاهرها قول, قول على الله بلا علم وهو حرام لقوله تعالى قل إنما حرم ربي الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن 
والإثم والبغي بغير الحق وأن تشركوا بالله ما لم ينزل به سلطانا وأن تقولوا على الله ما لا تعلمون مثال ذلك قوله تعالى أي كيف؟ أي كمل قائلة الأولى أيوة مثال ذلك قوله تعالى بل يدان مبسوطتان ينفق كيف يشاء فإن ظاهر الآية أن الله أن لله يدان حقيقة يدين حقيقتين فيجب إثبات ذلك له فإذا قال قائل المراد بهما القوة قلنا له هذا صرف لكلام عن ظاهره فلا يجوز القول به لأنه قول قول على الله بلا علم أيوة دا دو دو شوف الباب هناك أي طب بسم الله so uh, starting concerning a a lot of a English I well I give my English <coughs> or someone does or you have it there or you want to read you want to read I Before entering into the core of this book, I would first like to introduce some important principles related to the names and attributes of Allah. So many concerns regarding this particular matter, regarding Asma'il, the Spontale, the Sifati, regarding concerns not the author Rahimullah or the Shara, Ibn Uthayim Rahimullah, which before he actually goes into the actual citation, Samir Kitab, the main core of the book, which I like certain Qawaid. So the person have these principles before you actually go into discussing matters concerning Asma'il, the Sifat. Nam. So he laying down the foundation. So you have these principles to use as a guide while discussing these masail. Nam. So the person somewhat we know as a result of the person can come up to the correct conclusions. So having these principles becomes your guide that to be followed throughout. And so these guys can be applied in any matter relating to al asma wa sifat. Nam. So even though we may be discussing specific one in this book, but the rules can be applied across the board. Nam, so the person is clear regarding so these things were said no. So when you have the kawa in the guy uh, the guide, then you can apply it to anything that you face. But if you just look at the example without the kawa, then you always need someone to help you and to guide you through. So it's giving you uh, those kawa. And the ulama Ibn Sayyid Rahimullah have other other books that he have written specifically about kawa as now was sifat. So he has books specific about those particular topics and others, especially in our time, in contemporary time, you find many of the uh, some of the Mashaykh. I've written books specifically regarding Qawad Asma wa Sifat. Because of one, because of the lapse, the kind of somewhat the uh, uh, corruption that occurred regarding Asma wa Sifat. From the Jama'at, well, Mabad al Jama'at, Wabad al Maza'ib, Min Asha'ir al Matswadiyya, and others who have somewhat uh, corrupted matters concerning Asma wa Sifat. And a contemporary time of those things where many have been misguided regarding al asma was sifat. Aywa that he mentioned, as we mentioned, I want a mashaykh from Yemen that also he has done some taliqat upon the book of Ibn Taymin. That also he uses a guide. Aywa. Ay, na, na. The first principle what is obligatory from the text of the Quran, the text of the Quran and Sunnah regarding the names and attributes of Allah? With regards to the text of the Quran <coughs> and the Sunnah, it is obligatory concerning the names and attributes of Allah to leave their proofs and implications upon their literal meanings without changing them. This is because Allah revealed the Quran in plain in a plain Arabic language, and the Prophet Sallallahu used to speak with the Arabic language. Hey, we'll continue. Therefore, it is obligatory to leave the implications of the words of Allah and the words of the Messenger. So, the implication you put meaning. The la ilaha can put also meaning. Nam, aywa. So, Allah and Islam, as they are. In fact, in that language, also changing it from its literal meaning is speaking about Allah's speaking about Allah without knowledge. Okay, the key, huh? 
Aywa. So here the author Rahim or the Shah Rahim of Allah is discussing to us regarding regarding of those kawaii to mention Fil Wajib Nahu Nosus Al Kitabu Sunna Fi Asma U Sifat regarding the texts that have come to us regarding Asma U Sifat, meaning Quran the Sunnah, are we supposed to understand that text correctly regarding the wordings that are used? Nam Allah the word the Shaykh mentioned a wajib fi nusul al-kitab wa sunnah ibqa dalalati ha ala zahiraha ala zahiraha that to read for the text wording regard our text that have come to us by with the Quran or by with the sunnah that those wording that I use regarding aspanta names and attributes nam that they are to be understood based upon the meaning that is zahir zahir meaning here aqeeqah the meaning that that is normal is not is real meaning. Though here also, so you find that in uh, the ulama usul, sometimes they use concerning dalalatil al-fad, which is a great section concerning ilm of understanding the text. Nam. So regarding the ulama of understanding the text, each word have a meaning. So they call it dalalatil al al al-fad, how to understand word and the ruling that comes from it and what can be extracted from it. They have either a wording can have by way of his meaning could be either one nas zahir mujmal mubayyin and mu'awwal khamsa nas a bit high is it I'm going too much nas so a word we're going to all of them a word by Nas. Nas in the Usuliyin meaning that that word only have one meaning that can be taken from it. And no other meaning. So it's a Nas. It's very clear, direct regarding what is intended. And there's no other way for it. It has no other, other meaning other than this meaning that can be taken. Vahir as mentioned here. Vahir is also of those terms that are used. Vahir, they mean concerning that Vahir uh, Either mean in the Usuliyin, ma yahtamil ma nayin fa akthar. A wording, a word that can have either that have either two or more meanings that could be derived from it. Two or more meanings. <coughs> With me, so the word vahir in the Usuliyin means that a word that can you can derive from it. Two or more meanings with me <coughs> that mention Wafi Ahaduhuma or Ahaduhuma Ahaduha Arjah. One of the meaning, even if I have, for example, three meanings, but one of those meaning is stronger compared to the others. One of the meaning is more apparent, stronger compared to the others. And for you to leave that more stronger meaning, you need some form of text. You need something koi, strong, for you to leave the more apparent meaning. Clear? That's vahir. So the wording, as you mentioned, we mentioned before, asad. Asad, nam, could have many meanings. It could mean lion, could mean bravery. Nam, but what is now? Ja asad. Min ghaba. The thing that is apparent, that means what? Ghaba, Asad, Ghaba, jungle, Asad, may mean what? Lion, not that bravery. As a person, Ja, Nam. So that means the one become more apparent. For you to leave it to something, you have to say it means bravery, they need something, some form of text, aqua, to leave that apparent meaning. With me. So just like concern so that pro when you when it answered up, if you take the less apparent meaning, you take the less apparent meaning, that is said to be ta'wil. You are now mu'awwal. You are now going away from the more apparent meaning, the stronger meaning, to a lesser one. So the stronger one that is dahir. And the less one, if you take that one, then that is ta'wil. You are mu'awwal. Now you are changing. You are taking the lesser meaning with no reason to do so. Clear? Am I confusing? No. No. 
Plant clear? Sual? So what about when it comes to um, when I want to, the, the, the Mu'allaf, uh, the Sharif, he said, he brought the ayah, bani adabu mansuta tan. There's only one ma'na that can be derived from that. So why is it said that a person is mu'awwin uh, if there's no other uh, It can yet, yet, uh, sometimes can mean kuwa. Mm. Yet can mean understood concerning me in the sense of kuwa. Mm. But that's a less meaning. Mm. Fine? So that's sometimes, some say that, well, uh, so you find that sometimes one word Arabic in the Arabic language, sometimes can have, possibly have, the week may be weak, but it still may have, can be taken from it more than one meaning. But the fact that you're going to the lesser meaning, the less apparent one, in whatever reason, whatever the reason may be, then that is Ta'wil. So for instance, for Istiwa, when they say Istiwa, no, they don't, they don't, don't, say don't, say don't, hey, don't confuse yourself. Find? That's what the Shaykh Abdul Allah, he mentioned, or Rahimullah, mentioned these kawaid. You understand? So when you understand, so don't understand just one, understand as much more, because they mention a few of them. Now, and apply them accordingly, each according to its siyak and according to what you're dealing with. Now, so Asma'u Sifat is a majmu'a min al kawaid. So this is just one of them, regarding of the first of those, regarding the latter al fad in Asma'u Sifat, regarding, in this case, Asma'u Sifat. From what is mentioned in the Quran, taking for what is law here. The more apparent meaning that should be taken and not go to the lesser meaning. The lesser meaning is the way of the people of Al Batil. So I said for now, of the first qaida, stick to the law here and instead law in this one, the meaning which is aqiki. Nam, law here meaning aqika, the real meaning that should be derived, the one which is most apparent. No one? The one that's in here, as they say, in your face. Nam? So say so whatever he gives you just, that he mentioned after then, uh, just concerning of the first principle, regarding asma wa sifat, take them for what? The meaning that is apparent and understood in the language of Luta Arabia. In whatever of those names that may be mentioned, in whatever of those names or sifat that may be mentioned, Take it for the apparent meaning. Where? That's the first thing. Then I mention the ayah, قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَمْ رَبِّي فَوَاهِشْ مَا ضَفَ مِنَا وَمَوَطًا To Ayla al-Ada mention, the Shaif al-Ayah mention, وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ That's the Shaif from the Ayah. وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ For you to say what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which you do not know. So even that applies to Islam in general and in Asma wa Sifat in this case specifically. So speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taking things from its apparent meaning and its real meaning, then this is a part of uh, speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not based upon ignorance. Nam? So that's regarding that particular uh, Matter and it's mentioned the hukum regarding speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without that is something which is haram, it's something which is haram. Then it mentioned as a secondary, Bal Yadahu Mabsutatan Yunfiq Kaifa Yasha. So mentioned concerning Aliyat, understood that it is. Now, with these matters as to be mentioned, understood in a way befitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my Ali, Lila subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we understand these wordings as their apparent meaning. Nam in a manner befitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We understand these wordings in a manner befitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of perfection and completeness as to be covered also more in detail. But if the first point is what? Understanding the wordings in the Quran the Sunnah relating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon his law here. And not to change or alter any meaning or take a lesser meaning without a valid reason. Nam, that's how one falls into ta'wil. Aywa. Ay, al qaida al al thani. But also, in this sense, it's not the word zahir mean hakiki. Nam, but also the usuliyin, as a way of the al alfad. Have it into five, five, five is mentioned. We mention a five or what? That's usul al-fiqh. As usul al-fiqh, 
also applies to we have nas. So words that are used and how we understand them, sometimes it's a nas. Nas, as we just mentioned, she mentioned nusus kitabu sunnah. So nas could mean, in some case, you mean nas, meaning the source itself. With me? Nas can have various meanings. In some case, it could mean, depending on the dalail al alfad, the word itself. But nas could mean a source that is being used. And the nas for us would be the book and the sunnah. As a source to refer back to. Clear? Bear in mind all the ilm, usul al-fiqh, usul al-hadith, everything is one thing. Khidmat al-Islam. And to understand Islam correctly. Nam? So a person, so everything now has to be put together. So we said understanding Dalal al fad wordings that they're taking for their apparent meaning unless for you to move to you to start you to go take a, another meaning you need something which is aqua something which is very strong for you to leave that which is the asl uh so the mention of surname so i said regarding dalal nas zahir mubayin mujmal and Mu'awwal. Those are the five. Mu'awwal. They're going to be along. Mubayyin. Mujmal. Zahir. And Nas. That's regarding understanding wordings. Understanding wordings. The words that are being used. Nam. And the same apply regarding al-fiqh. That the wordings are understanding first and foremost by their apparent meaning. The dhahir. Aywa. Qaidat al-thani. Qaidat al-thani ya fi asma illahi. Wa tahta hadhi al-qaida furuq. Al-fadr al-awwal asma allahi kullaha husna. Ay. Balira fi al-husn ghayatihi. لأنها تتمنى بصفات كاملة لا نقص فيها بوجه من الوجوه قال الله تعالى ولله الأسماء الحسنى مثال ذلك الرحمن هو اسم من أسماء الله تعالى دال على صفة, صفة عظيمة هي الرحمة الواسعة ومن ثم نعرف أنه ليس من أسماء الله الدهر لأنه لا يتضمن معنى يبدو من غاية الحسن فأما قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تسب الدهر فإن الله هو الدهر فمعناه مالك الدهر المتصرف فيه بدليل قوله في رواية الثانية عن الله تعالى بيده الأمر أيوة. أيوة. أكرا. قاعدة ثاني. أيوة. The second. Principle. أيوة. That regarding these principles, I have mentioned before. Concerning the word قاعدة, because I mentioned these are قواعد related to أسماء وصفات. So you have قواعد either قواعد دينية. They are somewhat either sometimes related to in this particular context أسماء وصفات. Certain principles, so said Qaida, he mentioned Qawaid, Jam Qaida. So the Mufrad, so this is, uh, he mentioned Qawaid, that's the Al Jam, the Al Jam, H Al Jam, the plural, and the singular is Qaid, Qaida. Nam? So it's the principle of Qawaid regarding Al Fiqhiyya. We have Qawaid Hadithiyya, Qawaid Akadiyya. So they can somewhat they. Uh, are used in various science. What is Qaida? We mentioned that last week. Qaida, not Qaida, Ahula. You know what I mean? Not uh, not, not Qaida, Ben Dadin crew. We're not talking that, huh? Alright? So we're talking Qaida, Sharia, not Qaida, this Jama, this particular group of people who do what they do. Nam? Our name such and such. We are given that name. So I said, Qawaid al-Shari'iyya. Qawaid al-Shari'iyya. What is Qawaid? 
where we discussed it last week or hinted at it last week. Qawaid or Qaida. So the mention concerned Al Qaida, Lugatan mean Asas. Qaida, Lugatan it means Asas. So Qaida Nam it means a foundation. Qaida means a foundation. Lugatan Nam but for Istila in the ulama it means either mention Qadiyat al Kulliya Qadiyat Kulliya so affairs that are comprehensive Yan Tabik Ala Jamia Adzaiha that it uh, is inclusive includes various sub principles sub sections clear so it's a principle it is a qaida it's a over overarching principle that it includes sub uh, I don't know what sub we use the word prin- sub sub subdivisions subdivisions it includes subdivisions now but the overall arch and everything is underneath it now so these are like you know I mentioned as I mentioned Qawaid al some mention Qawaid al meaning that these principles when I say Qawaid usually mean that most things not necessarily everything may fall into it but it means that comes to the most it encompass many things but not necessarily everything so I said Qawaid al or Qawaid al regarding these principles so in that space all these principles is how to understand them that everything may be inclusive some things may be uh, istisna'at things that are uh, exceptions to the rules to these general principles you with me? so these most of these rules that are there are qawaid they may mention as qawaid uh, qulliya but in most cases you have things that are exception to the rule yes most would be included but there are still cases of exceptions and that's for all the not to make those exceptions based upon following the Kawaid. Clear? Kawaid Asma was the fact. Just keep it. Asan with us? No. I tell you. <laughs> so the second principle, Tafadal, just mention so that Kawaid, just give a definition of Kawaid. Now sometimes these words are used a lot, but to understand it in, the, in, the, in terms of the Sharia. So I said, after things that they can sum with the author, they said, no, with Asma of Sifat, stick to, and in matters concerning that uh, Aqeedah, stick to the term, stick to wording used by the Sharia, and not to go outside it. Because you open yourself to attack. So always try to stay as close to the wordings that are within the Sharia, and not to go outside them with words that are somewhat uh, new. Or people are unfamiliar or unclear, you open uh, yourself for attack and error. Hey, what the fuck, There are several subdivisions, subdivisions included in this principle. The first subdivision all of the names of Allah are best, i.e., perfect. This means that they all possess the highest extent of goodness. This is since they are comprised of per- perfect attributes. There are no deficiencies <coughs> to be found in them in any way whatsoever. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Arabic. To him belongs the best of names. An example to this <coughs> is in the na- is it is the name Ar Rahman, which is one of the names of Allah, for it demonstrates a magnificent attribute, which is His vast mercy. We know that at Baha, time is not one of the names of Allah, for it does not possess a meaning that reaches the highest extent of goodness. <coughs> As for the Prophet Sallallahu statement, do not curse time, for indeed, Allah is at that time, then it, its meaning is that He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the owner of time, the one who dispenses it, the one who dispenses it. This change occurs based on 
the evidence found in his Salah statement in the second narration of his hadith, in which Allah SWT says, In my hand is the command. I turn, I turn in bracket cycles, the night and the day. And then after Rahimullah went for the second qaida and also his far uh, subdivision of these uh, uh, qawaid, and I mentioned concerning that uh, of these, uh, first thing that uh, <coughs> the qaida has been mentioned or been discussed, as mentioned, uh, far al-awwal, asmahi la kulluha husna, that uh, of the thing that to bear in mind that regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name, that all of them are mag uh, of, they said the beauty, another word in beauty, uh, husna, magnificence, Loftiness, Ewa, of loftiness, uh, Ewa. So of this Qaeda that you mentioned here that uh, preceded him, Ibn Uthaymi Rahimullah, regarding this particular Qaeda, just as the first, Ibn Qaim Rahimullah. So of the ulama who preceded Ibn Qaim, or mentioned this Qaeda before, Ibn Qaim al Jawzi Rahimullah in his book, Bada'i al Fawa'id. Bada'a, Bada'i al Fawa'id. Just as the first is the same thing. So the first Qaeda we mentioned also, Ibn Uthaymi Rahimullah, of those who have mentioned before, the same author. Uh, from the same book. So these are Qawa'a that he's been mentioning that he's not the first to bring these things forward and present them. But others are proceeded from the ulama before. And of those who went into detail regarding some of these Qawa'a, Ibn Khaim Rahimullah uh, regarding discussing Ibn Khaim Rahimullah regarding discussing some of these Qawa'a. And also Ibn Taymiyyah uh, to be mentioned also later. So as we said this was somewhat uh, very clear regarding particular uh, one regarding uh, that regarding his asma wa sifat are in there, the, the, uh, the loftiest and the highest regarding al husna. So concerning that, uh, the loftiest and the highest regarding uh, these uh, names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's what it says now. Accept them in the way befitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the highest degree. Accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names and attributes to the highest degree befitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I mentioned, لِأَنَّهَا مُتَضَمِّنْ لِسِفَاتِ كَامِلٍ As these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sifat, they in, what is inclusive, that there is something which is perfect, perfection. So to understand whatever sifat, name Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given, or uh, that in the sense of perfection. نَمْ لَا نَقْسَ فِيهَا Where there is no deficiency. No deficiency. مِنْ وَجْ فِيهَا in any form of deficiency. So it's your level of perfection. So I said go back to that we understand this beauty, loftiness, in a manner, in a manner befitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the highest degree of perfection. Uh, bear in mind with also that there is no uh, deficiency or impact, in, in, imperfection regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat and names. Then I mentioned Regarding this particular matter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Lillah, Asma, Al-Usna So he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirmed to himself that he has names that are lofty and beauty Then the Shaykh Rahimahullah, then he gave certain uh, example Gave certain example regarding uh, that particular uh, case Aywa that's concerning the second. So the second, uh, then I mentioned that uh, Shaykh Rahimullah wish to come somewhat to clarify certain matters. So sometimes so the Shaykh uh, Rahimullah, sometimes he tries to clarify certain shubah. Now, by mentioning concerning a case concerning ad dahar Concerning ad dahar that ad dahar is not an asma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's to remove any type of shubah. Regarding that particular matter, as mentioned, la tusabbu ad-dahar fa inna Allah huwa ad-dahar even though he mentioned that and that hadith that he mentioned uh, that hadith that is mentioned uh, they have the love in the Sahih Muslim that hadith with that love in the Sahih Muslim what time is it? ok I have to move 8 what time is Salat? ok uh, five. so Shaykh Rah Rahimahullah and that's something we have an alim that sometimes can establish certain principles, but also if anything attached to it that may be fihi muladbisat, thing that may be confusing for some, he tries to remove that confusion. Nam so dahar is not of the asma of Allah subhanahu wa taala, not of Allah subhanahu wa taala asma as the Shaykh Rahimahullah tried to 
uh, uh, Sheikh, uh, uh, explain our way here regarding that particular uh, matter. Then we go to, so regarding that particular matter, so the shahid of that particular qaida is what? What's the main principle from that qaida? Or far? What's the main point from that? There you are. So as far as the names are all beautiful, good, lofty, to the highest degree of perfection. Aywa, for Athani. 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 Of 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's it. Or 100. Now, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala name is not fixed, restricted to 99 or 100. Now, but the matter, the matter to be discussed. But of, the, uh, of those who have a tali, they mentioned that another point regarding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala names are not restricted to a fixed amount. I also mention that you know, that's regarding concern with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is ma'kuma, ma'surah. It is known and fixed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for us as human beings, it's unknown to us. So for us, Allah, that matter is an unknown, but to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is known. To us it is unknown. But to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding his names, all of them is known to him. But for us we know some of it. We know some of Allah's Prophet's name, so that's at the point that after that uh, there are also those who made a ta'aliq wish to bring to our attention, as mentioned by Ibn Khayyim rahimahullah. Ibn Hazim rahimahullah, of those who restrict Allah's Prophet's name to 99, and others. So you might find some of the people of Ilm may restrict Allah's Prophet's names to a fixed number. And after that they mention, like some mention 99 and the likes. Nam. So you may find some who may restrict it to a fixed number regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name or said it's not to be discussed. Is that the case or not? Tafaddal. Hey, so that's concerning that's Aywa, Englishman or English reader. Or it continues on the after, hasn't it? <laughs> إن معنى هذا الحديث إن من إن من أسماء الله تسعة وتسعين اسما من أحصاها دخل الجنة وليس المراد حصو أسمائه تعالى بهذا العدد ونظير هذا أن أن تقول عندي مئة عندي مئة درهم أعد عددتها للصدقة فلا ينافي أن يكون عندك درهم دراهم دراهم أخرى أعددتها لغير صدقة أي نعم جزاء الله خير <coughs> أي تفضل The second subdivision The names of Allah are not defined to a fixed and determined number or defined to a definite number sorry so the author Rahim or the Shah Rahim Allah is more discussing concerning Qawahid relating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. So I mentioned, so we're more sticking at this point, we're discussing more Qawahid relating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what? Names. This is the second Aywa. This is based on the famous hadith. <coughs> I ask you, O oh Allah, by every one of your names by which you have named yourself or revealed in your book. For those which you have taught to one of your creatures, or appropriated for yourself in the knowledge of the Qayyim, that is with you. 
specifying and grasping whatever Allah has <coughs> appropriated for himself in the knowledge of the Ali, the unseen, that is with him, is impossible to attain. The way to combine between this hadith and the other authentic hadith, verily, to Allah belongs 99 names by which whosoever takes account of them, i.e. memorizes, learn, and supplicates by them, will enter paradise. Is that the meaning of, sorry, is that the meaning of this latter hadith is? Verily, from, from <coughs> among, sorry, verily, from among all the names of Allah are 99 names, by which if someone takes account of them, he will enter paradise. It does not mean that the names of Allah are restricted to this number, i.e. 99. The equivalent of this would be if one were to say, I have $100 which I have counted out for the purpose of giving in charity. Does, 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 this does not negate that he has other dollars in his possession which he has counted out for a purpose, for a purpose <coughs> other than charity. Nam, so uh, the author Rahimu Allah, the Shah Rahimu Allah, uh, Shaykh Ibn Sayyim Rahimu Allah, that uh, mentioned Al Far Al Thani, the second of those uh, sub Masail uh, relating to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's Al Asma. Then I mentioned regarding I uh, said concern Azza, the title Asma Hilla Ghairu Maksura Bi Adil Muayyin. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala names are not restricted to a fixed number. Uh, then the Sheikh uh, uh, went on to explain the reason concern and mentioned a hadith which is mashhur and the hadith he mentioned which is mashhur that uh, that hadith is. Uh, uh, in the Ahmed, Rawahu Imam Ahmed, Fi Ayy Kitab, Imam Ahmed, Fi Ayy Kitab, with Ahmed, Fi Musnad, Ahmed, Fi Musnadihi, Rahimahullah, Wa Ibn Abi Shayba, Wa Abu Yala, Wa Ibn Ibn, Wa Tabarani Fi Kabir, Wa Al Hakim Fi Mustadrak, with Isnad. But uh, this particular hadith, without Isnad, regarding uh, this particular hadith that was read, uh, that uh, we read regarding the hadith mentioned, Asallahu. Aslaka, Allahumma bi kulli ismin huwa lak al hadith. That uh, there's some kalam, the hadith, with this isna, the hadith, there's some kalam on that hadith. So the hadith by itself, in it, the son of ulama, all the hadith to be daif, due to some of the, uh, some particular narrators who are considered to be daif. So the hadith by itself is daif, based upon it, isnad. But with other shawahid, other narration, it gives it strength. With other narration, it gives it strength. To the degree of Hassan, le ghairi. The degree of Hassan Ligayri. Remember Hassan Ligayri. Hey. So Hassan Ligayri. So the hadith by itself, so hadith sometimes by itself is weak due to its isna that it comes with. So that is hadith. But with other hadith that have similar meaning, nam, from other companions, may give strength to that hadith and raise it to a higher degree, which is Hassan Ligayri. So that's the case of this particular hadith. So it can be used as a delil. Can be used as a delil. So hadith similar to that have been uh, narrated by Abu Musa al-Ashari uh, and others even though the hadith also have some daf in it but when they add it together they can somewhat uh, give strength and Shaykh al of those of contemporary uh, of those of authentic hadith of those of hadith to be uh, Hassan of them Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani so of the ulama of authentic this particular hadith Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in the sense of Hassan he all the hadith to be Hassan in his book uh, in some of his works uh, also of those one Ibn Qayyim also also Shaykh Kalbani Rahimahullah uh, of all the hadith to be Hassan so that's concerning the particular hadith that is mentioned so I mentioned this particular hadith as a proof regarding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala name is not restricted to a particular number it's not restricted to a particular uh, number uh, that he mentions that al-jam bayna hadha wa bayna qawlihi fil hadith al-sahih Meaning, uh, so trying to combine between the first hadith we just mentioned and other hadith that can somewhat can indicate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala names are restricted to a fixed number. So I mentioned the hadith, Inna Allah, Inna Lillah, Tis'a wa Tis'in, Isman. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have 99 names. Man ahsaha, dakhal al-jannah. Man ahsaha, dakhal al-jannah. So some people may understand from this particular hadith. Inna Lillah, Tis'a wa Tis'in, Isman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have 99 names. 
man ahsaha the one who and the word ahsaha is the next matter regarding the one who have know them memorize them, understand the meaning and act upon them the one who knows those or memorize 99 of Allah 99 names that are confirmed understand the meaning and act upon them Nam, then that's the one who have ahsaha Nam, so that just memorize it and that's it uh, but then there's no impact and no result then that's a different matter uh, today someone sent to the message and the message was like this there was a sheikh of a lesson Nam, Rakaik, sheikh of a lesson Nam, and our students so uh, but the sheikh he likes pets and of those birds so he was given as a gift a, a parrot and parrot what they can talk isn't it if trained so he had a parrot and a parrot and you know because the sheikh lesson he started to learn the shahada la ilallah la ilallah and always says it you know parrot they repeat every what they repeat their thing all the time isn't it so it's a la ilallah la ilallah all the time so the sheikh was mashallah parrot isn't it uh, like the parrot because he what that iman yakul la ilallah nam so the sheikh liked that and was pleased with that uh, and the student can and then after a while that uh, one day the student came to the sheikh and you know, he was sad type of thing and asked you know what's the situation so the sheikh mentioned that uh, so he explained that you know that uh, the cat ate, or the cat killed the parrot <laughs> the cat he killed the parrot nam uh, so he said you know that was the reason why you are so sad because you are you know your parrot that you like you know he died the sheikh said no that's not the reason why because of his death Nam so said no what's the reason he said uh, so the reason that the parrot when he was attacked to be killed by the the cat the parrot was screaming and you know screaming the parrot was screaming while he was being attacked by the the cat and the team said he said but all the time he would say la Allah and in this occasion he wasn't saying la Allah <laughs> With me, so it's always saying Lail Allah, Lail Allah, Lail Allah. But this situation, there's no Lail Allah is screaming. <laughs> Allah Mustan. <coughs> uh, so the said, thing for him was that with all this Lail Allah, at that time of death, you understand, he forgot Lail Allah and that's why he was screaming, you understand, trying to save his life. And he said, No, I fear for myself this. At the time of death, in a situation of hard time, we forget la Allah. You understand them, you know? So he said, that's the fear, that's the thing that I am that make me sad. And he finds no, that the parak, his case was that, he learned it on his tongue, just to say la Allah, learn his tongue, just not to repeat the thing. But it wasn't in his heart. <coughs> he didn't get to his heart, it was on his tongue. So he just said la Allah, la la repeat it. But because it didn't have any impact upon the art, when he faced a situation, you understand? He was saying something else because he didn't reach the heart. And that's what we fear. That's what he, 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 that Sheikh, he fear for himself. And the people are studying, so even the students, you know, they said, you know, that they also, you understand, uh, reflected regarding, you understand, learning certain things and it not reaching our heart. So knowing La Allah and Islam has actually penetrated our hearts or just our tongue. So we don't want to be like the, the parrot. Don't want to be like the, the parrot. Eight o'clock, so end with the parrot. And inshallah ta'ala, next week we'll continue. Obilai tawfiq. So next week inshallah ta'ala, we'll enter, we complete this hadith and then continue on.